Last night, the A's welcomed to town the Toronto Blue Jays and showed them no hospitality, pouncing early and often, and taking game one. For the second straight summer, the green and gold are rolling through the month of July. Clutch hitting and stellar pitching from the starters to the bullpen have been the formula for success. Tonight, the A's will face one of baseball's most crafty lefties in Mark Burley. The four-time All-Star is also one of Toronto's prized off-season pickups and is coming off his best start as a J. The A's will look to keep their hot July going and vote for their fifth straight win. A's Jays next. Well, the A's are hot, and the fans are coming out to check out their first baseball club as Dan Straley's going to take them out tonight against the Toronto Blue Jays, the powerful Toronto Blue Jays. So it's game two of this three-game series. A's look at their fifth consecutive win. It's the A's and the Blue Jays. You'll see it right here on Comcast Sportsnet, California. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Oakland A's Baseball. Along with Scott Hatterberg, I'm Glenn Kuyper. The A's have scored 19 runs in their last two games. And, Scott, the real good news is Ioannis Cespedes is really starting to swing the bat. He's had a huge two games. Well, you know how important he is statistically just having him in the lineup. But now if this guy's able to actually break out and start doing what we've seen the last two games, I mean, this is a huge lift for the A's. Last game of the Angels series. Three big knocks. He's six for ten in the last two. He's driving the ball. His approach, look, you can see right there, he's driving balls the other way. I think it's a huge key talking to Chili Davis. He agrees. Last night, triple down the line. The guy's coming through in big situations. He's not only just getting hits, but he's driving balls and driving guys in. And you see the home run that he hasn't hit in about a month. So you get this guy heated up and the trade deadline comes and you don't get anything, you're almost getting something if this guy gets hot. So Dan Straley will take them on tonight for the athletics. And the one thing that the Toronto Blue Jays do is they can hit home runs. You have to be careful. Can't leave balls in the middle of the plate. And we found that out last night. Yeah, you know, going into the game, Griffin has been known to give up the long ball. But don't feel bad, Griff, because this team hits a lot of home runs. 134, they're second in the major leagues. You see Lynn going deep there. Brett Laurie joining in, going deep down the left field line. These guys can bite you. Edward Incarnacion, who's hit a whole bunch lot this year. He's got 29 now. Goes deep to left center right there. This team can bite you. I mean, they've got some struggles. Yes, pitching has been an issue. Defense has been an issue. But offensively, they can put up some numbers. All right, so Dan Straley is going to pitch for the Athletics. And the veteran left-hander, Mark Burley, is going to pitch for the Toronto Blue Jays. And as always, we're going to keep a close eye on the Texas Rangers game. The Rangers are playing the Angels. Well, have lineups and first pitch when we come back to the O.co Coliseum in just a moment.
Welcome back to the Coliseum where we are just about set to roll with game two of the three game series between the A's and the Blue Jays. A's winning last night. Big offensive night for the Athletics. We'll try to do it again tonight. Game time weather presented by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Get to the beach. The admission free boardwalk is now open daily. Another cool night. 62 degrees. Won't get any warmer than that. And a pretty good breeze tonight. So Dan Straley in the middle of his warm-up tosses. He's wearing the green tops tonight. The Toronto Blue Jays wearing the blue tops in the gray pants. And let's look at the Jays lineup for tonight. It starts with that man, Jose Reyes. He's the shortstop. And then Maceiras Chur is at second. Batista and Carnacion, lots of power in the middle of the lineup. Lynn homered last night. Colby Rasmus, Aaron Sebia, Brett Laurie, he homered as well as the other two guys. And in left field, Emilio Bonifacio. Dan Straley's getting the start for the A's. Six and four on the season with a four and a half ERA. Trying to get back on the winning side of things. He's lost his last two, lost his last one versus the Angels. But, uh, he's going to get back on track, I have a feeling today. Here's the defense for the A's tonight. Cespedes in left. Young in center, Reddick in right, Donaldson, Rosales, Lowry, and Fryman. On the infield with Derek Norris doing the catching. So with the Blue Jays throwing the left-hander Mark Burley, Bob Melvin goes with some of the right-handed hitters, including Adam Rosales. So Straley is ready, looking for his seventh win of the year. And Jose Reyes is ready as he steps in the box. First pitch of the ball game is eased in there for a strike from Australia, so we're underway. 707 first, first pitch from the Coliseum. Just into the first row seat, so a quick 0 2 to Jose Reyes. You talk about this ball club being so dangerous with the long ball. Jose Reyes. You got the second hitter last night was Milky Cabrera tonight. Meister as, as tourists. Those are about the only two guys that are not going to come out of their absolute shoes yeah. swinging at every single pitch. And one of that table setters and the rest of this club is swinging for the downs. And if you keep these guys off the bases. Less damage can be done by those big power. Hits. And those are the two big fellows right there. Batista and Encarnacion. Heavy duty power numbers in that corner right there. 53 home runs combined for those two guys. Another 0 2 pitch and another foul ball. Australia in that last start gave up five earned runs in four and a third innings against the Angels, as Scott talked about his last two starts against the Angels. Key for him is throwing strikes, yes, but just missed location last time. He just made a lot of mistakes over the plate. He's very capable of being more fine. You're seeing him here, whole repertoire is being able to throw for strikes and not necessarily strikes over the plate, but being able to hit some corners here and there. Let's see Jose Reyes, no stride, and just holds up. That one's ripped to right field. Reddick hustling back, still going back, and he reaches up over the left shoulder to make the catch. So that ball was hit right on the nose by Reyes. So Reddick, a nice play to start the ball game. Pretty good at bat right here by Reyes, but you can see where that ball was. Trying to get something way ahead in the count that he could hit a corner. That ball drifts over the plate, and Jose Reyes puts a scalding on it, but nice play by Josh Reddick. So here's my series. Chur is another switch hitter. Three switch hitters in the lineup for the Blue Jays. Reyes is Chur and the ninth place hitter, Bonifacio. And it's over two. The foul ball. So Straley has come out throwing strikes early on. Nine of his first 11 pitches have been strikes. 
It's good to see, though, not just the fastball, mixing his sequences, using that breaking ball. Another foul ball. And Burley, he's ready to go. One and two now, two is Cheers. 244, five homers, 28 RBIs. Meiser is Turris. was 0 for 3 last night. And he hits that one slowly past the mound. Rosales has it near the back, and that's out number two. But here's our McDonald's true stories. August 3rd of last year, Dan Sterling pitching against these Toronto Blue Jays. What's the big deal? Well, it was his major league debut, August 3rd, 2012. Ended up getting a no decision. With six innings, five strikeouts. The A's won the game in 15 innings on a sacrifice fly by Coco Cripps. So, Dan Straley has made one start in his career against these Blue Jays, and it was his major league debut. Remember that. There was a lot of hype that day. Yep. This guy had a, he came with some fanfare and expectations. One and one to Jose Bautista. And that one's driven to left. Cespedes back. He turns around and it is gone. Jose Bautista with home run number 25. And the Blue Jays take a one to nothing lead. Kind of a high line drive. High and hard. All got out of here in a hurry. This is what they do. The only good thing is. If they're going to do it, make sure it's a solo shot. Griffin can attest to that. They got some power. Back to back sliders from Straley. This one just kind of backed up, stayed right in the wheelhouse. Batista knows what to do with those. Exmo brought to you by Cash Creek Casino Resort. Here's Encarnacion. He homered last night. He's got 29 home runs and 84 runs batted in. So in the home run race in the American League, Chris Davis has 37. Although I think he hit one tonight, he did. So Chris Davis now has 38. Miguel Cabrera has 32. Encarnacion, 29. And there's the home run by Batista. Carnacion third in the league in RBIs. Batista is tied with Adam Dunn now with 25 home runs. One and two to Encarnacion. Adam Lynn would be next. Rosales has it. Couple steps to his right. Side retired. Home run by Jose Bautista, his 25th of the year. So a half inning in the books. It's the Blue Jays one. The knee is coming to bat.
athletic spot. Coco Crisp is the DH, then Young in center, Lowry at second. Cespedes in left, Donaldson at third, Fryman at first, Norris will catch, and then Reddick and Rosales down at the bottom. The veteran lefty Mark Burley is taking the mound for the Blue Jays. He's six and seven on the year with a four and a half ERA, and last time out pitched pretty good. Threw a shutout versus the Houston Astros. So Burley has been around a long time. Coco's seen him plenty. 49 at bats in his career against Burley with 16 hits. Drives this one toward left center, hit pretty well. Rasmus back, still going back. Now he gets under it. Right in front of the Comcast Sportsnet California sign, and that's out number one. Here's the Blue Jays defense tonight. Bonifacio is in left field. Rasmus in center, Bautista in right. Henry, Reyes, Esturas, Encarnacion on the infield, Aaron Sebia. Is the catcher. Melky Cabrera is getting the night off. And from what we understand, one of the strategies that John Gibbons uses if the pitcher is a little bit of a fly ball pitcher, which Burley is, because Melky Cabrera has just not been very good in the outfield this year. They will sometimes sit him. It's hard to believe. But Encarnacion handles the foul pop. But it's hard to believe that they would. That he's take that bat out. Man. Not even third well, position. Know, we saw it last night. Yeah, he did not look good yeah. defensively at all. So Tell maybe it's, we're not even surprised. Lumbering game. Yeah. I mean, just really labored running. I, and what the. He's had some leg problems yeah. this year. I can see it for the defensive purposes. Mm -hmm. An aspect of the game they've struggled on. Two outs for Lowry. And Burley with a couple of fly ball outs. One to center in the pop out as Lowry steps in, hitting 289 with eight homers, 43 RBIs. You're going to see a lot of that from Mark Burley. He's just a crafty guy, doesn't throw hard, nothing exciting, pretty vanilla package as far as stuff, but. He does not give in. He nibbles. He will make you chase. Line drive right into the glove of Laurie. Side retired. So Burley has a quick first inning, and it's one nothing Toronto. Sportsnet California is brought to you by the Smurfs 2 in theaters July 31st, which would be tomorrow. Jose Bautista with a solo home run in the first inning, 1 0 Blue Jays. It would be Lind, Rasmus, Aaron Sebia. So 
First pitch is low. We're watching the Rangers Angels game closely. It's Texas six. The Angels four in the bottom of the fifth inning. In Arlington. It's been kind of a wild game. They can get wild down there. Yeah, they can. And you can usually tell early on. Dramatic win last night for the Rangers. High pop up. Donaldson racing over toward the seats and he's got it and he bangs into the tarp and, and let's hope he's okay and I think he is. Boy, he banged his knee hard into that tarp. Yeah, you know, he banged it before he got to the ball. High drifty pop up from Lynn. Donaldson peeks down just at the end and knew it was going to be close, but watch him bang his knee before he actually grabs the ball. That could have been ugly. Pretty good concentration to still squeeze that one. Be careful. Be careful, Josh. Now he's a tough guy. One out for Colby Rasmus. And in that Rangers game, it was CJ Wilson pitching for the Angels, and he's been pitching great. And Derek Holland, so two. Real good left handers, but neither very sharp. Like Wilson is out of the game. Toward Young. And he's got it. So two outs here in the second inning. And that'll bring up JP Aaron Sebia. And of course, the Major League Major Baseball trade nine, deadline is Jay close. Looming. The, <laughs> it is looming. <laughs> the deadline is 1 p.m. Pacific time tomorrow. So tomorrow afternoon at 1 o'clock, your deal needs to be in the hands of Major League Baseball. And listen, with social media now, there's so many rumors going on. But it's kind of fun to watch. It is fun to watch. <laughs> But you really can't get caught up in any single rumor. There's so many things going on. But there, there, there will be some activity. Uh, who knows? Tonight, certainly yeah. in the morning. Yeah. You may have deals that are done and not announced till tomorrow. Well, That's you, a look, possibility. you look around the league and you hear so and so has been scratched from the lineup today. I yeah. mean, it's happening all over. So there's things in the works. Yeah. And not only Biglers, you hear. Top prospects pulled out of a game in the minor league. I mean, it's, it's just unbelievable. Fuels, all the different things, but, fuels even ah. more speculation. Yeah. Yeah. It's another thing that baseball has that I, other sports have a trade deadline, but nothing like baseball trade deadline. No. It certainly makes it fun and interesting. Maybe not so much for the players. They have to live <laughs> through the rumors who. It probably wouldn't be all that yeah. much fun. Now, especially if you're one of the guys, you feel like you uh, just need to have an empty box by your locker and just yeah. fill it up all the time. But yeah, when your name is no longer on your nameplate, that's it's usually a bad sign. One thing for uh, <laughs> the player, but usually the family and the wife yeah. and the kids, it's tough. Good inning for Dan Straley. He ends it with a strikeout of Aaron Sebia. Bottom of the second, coming up.
sure to log on to CSNCalifornia.com for all of your favorite segments, which are available on demand right now. Check out Jed Lowry and team photographer Michael Zagaris. The Z-Man share their passion for photography. CSNCalifornia.com, your interactive home for authentic Bay Area sports. How'd you like to oh, Z-Man. spend a couple hours with Michael Zagaris? I think it would be have. fun, and I think it would be interesting, and I think it would be a lot of different things. This guy is fascinating. Just let him tell stories. There he is, gentleman on the right. He's like Forrest Gump. He's been he's been, he's been in some crazy situations, and he will tell you about them. And oh, you'll just shake your head and be convinced that it's not true. But that's how crazy they are. He's a good guy. Cespedes rips one toward Bonifacio, hustles back, and he makes the catch. So another hard hit ball by Cespedes. So that continues to be nice to see. Exactly what you want to see. Him continuing this from game to game. Great swing. You can see that upper body over the ball. Not pulling off. This guy, hey, he's showing signs of getting locked in. Watched him at BP today. Had a great BP. You just see it in his eyes. Things are starting to click. Here's Donaldson who takes an off-speed pitch just a bit outside. Sinker low. See that stat right there, 339 versus lefties. It does some damage versus southpaws. Reyes scoops it up. And that's out number two. Well, Burley's one of those guys that he'll give up some hits because he's generally around the plate. But he's also a guy, if, if he's sitting there and gets rolling, and guys are making plays behind him, and oh, yeah. works quickly. I mean, he can carve right through a lineup. You'll be staring at him in the ninth inning before you know it. <laughs> With four hits, I mean he's he's good. This he's is good. a this is what you call a comfortable offer right here. Not Wait. overpowering, you know. He's going to give up contact. It's yeah. just he gets you lost in that speed mix. You're out front, gets on your hands a little, makes you chase. Look at those numbers since 2001. And how about this? This is his 13th year in the big leagues. He has never been on the disabled list. <laughs> Now for a guy who that's unbelievable strong 200 innings at least yeah. every year. Yeah, so that, the mechanics are good and. He's going to give it to you. He's going to give you the innings. He's going to give you the starts. Works hard genetically blessed. That's what you call it. That's a workhorse right there. Yeah. Facing Nate Fryman with two outs here in the second inning. That Burley signed that four year deal with Miami to leave Chicago and after one year and then of course was traded. So he's in year two of that contract. So he's signed through 2015. Reached for by Fryman, pops it foul. But don't forget, Burley has a no hitter yep. and a perfect game. So two yep. no hitters and one of them a perfect game. So he can get rolling and he paints right there and gets his first strikeout. Six up, six down for Burley on to the third. One nothing, Blue Jay.
third inning. G.I. Joe's ultimate human weapon, Ray Park, codename Snake Eyes, threw out the ceremonial first pitch today. Dug out by Grant Balfour, sort of. I would not mess with Snake Eyes. I just wouldn't do it. Don't forget to go get your copy of the worldwide blockbuster G.I. Joe Retaliation. It's on Blu-ray and DVD in stores today. Go Joe. So that was Ray Park, codename Snake Eyes. And they've been kind enough to give us the DVD, taking it home. Could be a little late night viewing tonight. What do you think, Scott? I think I think you're going to tune in. My wife will be really excited about watching G.I. Joe Retaliation. You know, when I get home tonight, she'll be psyched about that. Bring your authentic sword out and watch it <laughs> in uniform. That's right. Codename Snake Eyes. I was a G.I. Joe fan as a kid. I had a G.I. Joe. Did you? You still got it, don't you? You know it. In the original box. I knew it. Brett Laurie rolls one into center field for a leadoff single. So that is hit number two, leadoff single. In the ninth position. I'm going to bring up Bonifacio. Bonifacio. Slider going away. Lori not trying to do too much with it. Just shoots it up the middle. Hit a home run the other night. Last night. So here's the speedy Emilio Bonifacio switch hitter. He came over as part of that huge trade. Blue Jays thought they were getting a little bit more out of Bonifacio. He is hitting just 214. Shows bunt, pulls the bat back. But he is very fast. You, know, you get him running on the bases. Yeah, he can move out. Lori's pretty quick over there at first two. Lori runs and the ball's foul back. So the Blue Jays, who talked a lot about their power, they will run as well. 78 stolen bases. That's the third most in the American League. And that it looked like more of a hit and run, but still moving a runner. A change up that drops low. So two and one the count to Bonifacio. Donaldson in at third. Quick throw to first. Lari runs again, and the ball's bounced toward Rosales, who Stops and then has to retreat to get the backhand, and he throws out Bonifacio. So Rosales was heading towards second. He had to stop and turn around. Made a nice play and throws out Bonifacio. The runner gets to second base. Really did. Had to put on the brakes quick. Big guy Rosales does a nice job of it. Bonifacio runs really well. It's a good job of breaking and keeping your head up. Bonifacio knowing that. He's probably going to have the coverage and tries to shoot it in the hole, but Rosales does a nice job of getting back. So top of the order, Jose Reyes, who lined out to Reddick and Wright, leading off the ball game. Good sign from Straley so far. He's a lot of strike one and not just with the fastball. You see the slider right there. Big key for him. Backhanded by 
Norris. So the count one and one. Well, we mentioned Straley's lost his last two and. He's really struggled this year versus the AL West, but outside there, he's pitched very well. Donaldson hustling over. Another chance, and he makes the catch. Reyes, Reyes standing at home plate. He can't believe it. As an opponent, coming to this ballpark and having those be outs is just incredibly frustrating. Now, buddy, Similar play Donaldson had earlier. You see he gets over there in a little bit more time and Reyes hangs his head, but Donaldson well aware of how much foul ground there is. So here's his Torres who takes a first pitch strike. You're seeing a lot of breaking balls early for strike one. Part of it was just how aggressive they were versus Griffin yesterday early in the count first pitch. This team could bite you like we talked about. And you know they're probably geared fastball so he's. He's pitching backwards so you'd say. Using that breaking ball a little bit more early. As sure has bounced out to Rosales in the first inning. More action for Rosie who charges gets a good hop throws in time and Ori is stranded bottom of the third coming up the Jays won the A's nothing. Of the third inning. So good A's fans there. I think they're undercover. Yeah. Couple agents. Look like Derek Norris, but Derek Norris is in the lineup tonight, so he can't be in two places at oh, one yeah. time. I don't good, believe. good casting. Burley. First pitch outside to Norris. Norris, Reddick, and Rosales here in the bottom of the third. On the outside corner. 214 with seven homers, 24 RBIs for Norris. Swinging it good in July, hitting 333. As a club, you know, the win loss record looks pretty good. They have really struggled as a team. Swinging it better lately, but on the month, not very good.
one two pitch setting up inside and it's a little up and in. You can see Burley likes to move it in and out. He carved up poor Fryman. Working him away and then in. Norris fights that one off. When he wants to come in or say away, he either hits his spot or he misses to the ball side of the plate. He just does not make mistakes over the plate. Not when he's right. And that's a base hit to left field. So Norris leads off the third with the A's first hit. Norris gets a little breaking ball coming into him. Gets jammed a little bit. Gets enough wood on it to shoot it in that six hole. So here's Reddick. So first base runners are Burley in the stretch for the first time. See if that makes a difference. Slider down and away. Two sixteen, five homers, thirty seven RBIs for Reddick. He had three RBIs last night. Yeah, drove the ball to left center. Always a good sign for a struggling hitter. He drives this one to right. Batista under it now, and he makes the catch. Norris hustles back to tag, but stays at first. So Reddick did not miss that one by a whole lot. The A's third annual Italian Heritage Night presented by Peroni is on Friday, August 2nd. All fans that purchase a special ticket for the event will receive an exclusive A's Italian Heritage giveaway item and a traditional food item served in the West Side Club. The skipper. Yep. Salas takes a rip at the first pitch, fouls it back. Salas 197, four homers, eight RBIs. And that one line toward Laurie, who makes a terrific diving catch. It was kind of a soft line drive, maybe a broken bat, but Laurie had to extend full to his left, and he made a great play. Pretty much the same swing Norris put on that slider. Got maybe a little bit more jammed. Rosales did, pulled it a little bit more. Laurie makes a nice job ranging to his left. Not hit too hard, but nice play, but nonetheless. Coco, shallow center, and Rasmus runs it down, and that's it for the A. So they got a leadoff single, nothing else, and. We're moving to the fourth. One nothing Blue Jays.
Market. Fans that purchase a special Plaza Reserve ticket package will receive a pair of green and gold Zubaz pants at that afternoon's game against the Rangers. These classic and comfortable pants are a throwback to the early 1990s. <laughs> Visit OaklandAthletics.com slash Zubaz to buy the ticket and pants package. Or I thought your concentration was really strong reading that. <laughs> or you could pick an item such as those, what have you. Well, as we like to say, Scott, <laughs> those gentlemen in those outfits at one point today did stand in front of the mirror and go, yep, uh, this is what I'm going with today. <laughs> yep. Mom, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> And they did the same thing. <laughs> let's go with the let's go with the bear outfit. You good? Uh, That's got to be some kind of cul-de-sac they live on. I'm going bear outfit tonight. It's a full moon, I know it. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna go with the pink rabbit outfit tonight. All right, let's go. Here we go to the game. Oh, <laughs> Donaldson has it. And he throws the first. Batista's retired. That outfit has a little Ralphie from Christmas Story to it, too. Oh, <laughs> remember Ralphie from Christmas Story? I remember Everybody. Ralphie. Yeah, yeah. Hey, guy. Classic. Yeah. Red Rider. Not to be outdone. Two guys in yellow are on the move now. They're going to go for a little walk, looks like. Be hard to sit still wearing that outfit. Keep an eye on my binoculars. <laughs> oh, and one to Encarnacion. Yeah, and he swings at a pitch in the dirt. Oh, and two. Thing you can do if you're straily is these guys, especially the middle of the order, they like to go deep. They will expand, especially when you get ahead, like he's shown he's doing. And an 0-2 pitch, too much of the plate, and Encarnacion drills one toward right center for a hit. Now these are the mistakes right here that you're thankful you only give up a a base hit. This guy is very capable of doing exactly what Batista did, and that's hammering it out of the ballpark. This is just an 0 2 pitch that is right down Main Street. He's got to pull a little bit more focus and be a little bit more fine and be aware of your misses in situations like that. So here's Adam Lind. And Lind watches the changeup drop low. There's a bullet to right, and that's a base hit. Encarnacion will stop at second base. So a couple of hard hit singles with one out, and that'll bring up Colby Rasmus. Well, Lynn went deep last night. And trying to come inside, and you can see that ball eh, just drifted back over the plate a little bit. Nice flat swing, quick bat. You can hear that noise, you know it's hit good. Back to back singles for the Blue Jays. Rasmus hit a fly ball to center field in the second inning. And he rolls that one foul. The Rangers still leading the Angels at six to four in the top of the seventh inning. Sebia is the on deck hitter. And breaking ball just missed outside. Pretty good pitch right there. 
Trying to backdoor that breaking ball, just misses. Take a look if it came back enough. Norris gave it a little twitch to bring it back over the white part. Usually when you do that, you're telling everybody it's just off the plate. There's a base hit left field. Here comes Encarnacion, and they're going to hold him up right. And now Cespedes kicks the ball, and Encarnacion will trot home. They were holding him up, and Cespedes could not come up with it clean. So really, that should be an error on Cespedes, because they were holding him up. And when they saw he dropped the ball in left field, then he continued home. Rasmus gets a ball up and over the plate, hits it the other way, but they're sending him, they're sending him, and then at the last minute they're holding him, and I'm not so sure Cespedes didn't kind of peek up, and it looks like he did just to see if he was going to go or not. And I think that look up. See, he's going, yep. and that right now he's being held up, and then the he ball is juggling, he comes in to score. He does a nice job of keeping his eyes on the third base coach. Because he very well could have stopped and busted back to the base, but they saw that Cespedes kicked it and he walked on in. So it's a single E7, so Carnaciano scored when Cespedes juggled the ball. Either way, it's two nothing Blue Jays, and they still have two on and one out for Aaron Seabe. That one runs inside. He was one of those borderline plays. You don't know if he's going to go or not. I don't even think the third base coach knows. So he sends him, sends him, and at the last second he stopped him. And I think Cespedes, knowing that it was so gray, just peeked up a hair. And that's probably kind of a natural thing for an outfielder to do. Right, because if just, he's going. Just peek a little bit. Yeah. It's kind of an in-between hop, though. You could see it wasn't an easy ground ball pickup. Just jumped up on him a little bit. Yeah, that's a good point, too. Sometimes outfielders get in-between hops. Yeah, right. That ball wasn't hit softly. 2-0 to Aaron Sebia. Takes a fastball right there for a strike. You know, you talk about guys in the outfield getting... In between hop, they don't have the choice or the luxury of an infielder be able to play it on a hop. They got to charge because there's going to be a play at the plate to make that throw. And a lot of times you just got to hope your hands are good enough to make the play. So now it's two and two. But he's all right down the line. Yeah, it looked like it might have caught her. Lynn that second, Raspis at first. And a fastball just a bit low. So full count, one out. Trying to go inside right here. Misses over the plate, but down. Dan's just had a tough time getting it to one side of the plate or the other. Runner not going, and the pitch is hit high. Foul territory, right side, and Reddick is going to get there, and he makes the catch. And now tagging up is Lynn. He's going to try for third, and he'll make it. So a very long run for Reddick. And when it went up, it didn't look like anybody was going to get it, but Reddick, very nice play. Exactly right. This is the home field advantage of knowing how quick and how hard you got to break to get to some of these balls, because that no man's land right there. Not many right fielders make that play. Great job on the run by Josh Reddick. So two outs and Brett Laurie steps in. He's singled in the third inning. Breaking ball just kind of stayed up, stayed high.
Rosales charges. He's got it. Flips to second. Side retired. A run for the Blue Jays. So we're going to the bottom of the fourth inning. Toronto two and the A's nothing. Fourth inning. Two nothing. The Blue Jays. Blue Jays with a single run in the first, single run in the fourth. So the A's try to come back against Burley, who has given up just one hit through the first three innings. Young, Lowry, and Cespedes. So we got a Lowry and a Lowry. Don't get him confused. Already have. <laughs> Shutdown opportunity for. Mark Burley. It's a shade below the AL average. Only 35 pitches so far for Burley. Very efficient. High fly ball towards center field. Rasmus is under it. To his left a little bit, and that's out number one. Here's our trivia question brought to you by AT&T who are the only two pitchers in Major League history to win a gold glove in the same season that they tossed a no hitter. I know one. If you think you know an answer or you got a good guess tweet us at at CSN athletics. Here's Jed Lowry. Well Burley's one. Gold glove four times, and as we said, he's got a no hitter and a perfect game. So that may be a good guess. He's had some cool highlights as a pitcher defensively I, over the years. Yeah, some diving things down the line, some little shovel things. The athletic guy. Remember the shovel play between his legs yeah. that he made a couple years ago. Right. It's still one. It's one of the greatest plays. In the last 10 years. From a pitcher for sure. Lowry drops a single into center field. So that's hit number two, and here comes Cespedes. Well, if you're going to get hits off this guy, you're going to have to hit him in very difficult parts of the zone. As you can see right there, that is low and away. As far in the strike zone, down in the corner, you can be, and Lowry does exactly all he can do with it. And let's flip it over the second baseman's head. First pitch to Cespedes is on the outside corner for sure. Cespedes hit the ball really nicely to left field his last time up. Signs of breaking out. Skies this one. 
the right center. Rasmus more activity for the Blue Jays center fielder. He's got it. So that's out number two. Scott, you like the swing better though, Cespedes? Even that, I was about to say, that out. I, I like the swing. I mean, I know he missed it, but he's more in sync. It's more use of his legs. It's less rotational with his upper body. He really tries to force the action. He's so strong. But that is a pretty good swing. You can see the, his shoulders. He's still kind of over the ball. So if you not getting too deep mechanically. And he's right like that. I mean, that was a pretty good pass. One to Donaldson, who grounded out to short in the first inning. Inside corner, and it's 0-2. How many guys, Scott? How many left-handed pitchers will throw an 80-mile-an-hour pitch on the inside corner to a right-handed hitter? Not a lot. It's such a dangerous thing to do. You have to have such trust and such command to be able to do it because if you miss over the plate those balls don't come back <laughs> no, they don't but if guess if if you're, you're worried about it yeah. then you're not going to do it anyway and if you're able to do it it just opens up so much the other way when you got that good change up that backdoor slider Donaldson bounces one past Ari and into left field so two on two out and here comes Nate Freiman. That's a needed hit there for Donaldson. Burley trying to throw this backdoor cutter. Donaldson reaches out. Just hits it good enough. To find that six hole. So an opportunity for Fryman. He struck out looking in the second inning. Trying to do a nice job with runners in scoring position. Let's see what he can do here. Two outs. First pitch in off the plate. One and zero. The game 2 0. So Nate Fryman being selective. Now he's in the driver's seat. If you're a hitter right here, though, and you think that he's going to throw you a cookie, you better think again because this guy will not give in. He'll still try and pick a corner. So Fryman on 2 0 was ready to rip and he rolls it foul. In Arlington, Josh Hamilton. With a bases loaded double. And the Angels have taken a 7 to 6 lead over the Rangers going to the bottom of the seventh inning. So Hamilton with a big hit for the Angels. Reyes to his right, quickly to second, and they just skip Donaldson for the force outside, retired. A strand a pair, and we're headed to the fifth inning. Blue Jays two, A's nothing.
Only two pitchers in Major League history to win a gold glove in the same season they tossed a no hitter. Bob Gibson in 1971 and Mark Burley in 2009. Well, you're good if you pull that one out. Well, we had a pretty good idea Burley was in there. Bob Gibson. And right now, the A's trailing two to nothing to Burley. Top of the fifth inning, Bonifacio Reyes as Turris. Bonifacio grounded out to short his first at bat. Scott, remember how we talked about Eric Ibar batting ninth with the Angels? A yep. speed guy. Right. And here's another example where you, you have really three speedy, I guess you could say leadoff hitter types hitting nine, one, and two right in front of the big boppers. So Bonifacio, you got to keep him off the bases because if you don't, things are going to really happen. He makes life no fun for a pitcher on the bases. But you're right, you see it around the league a little bit, and it, it works, man. You get those quick guys, and because they're fast, it takes some of that attention away from what they should be concentrating at the plate. And when those middle of the order comes around, you want to be concentrating. Now, Bonifacio is hitting 214. Right. So if he was hitting 290, he probably wouldn't be hitting ninth. But for sure. The and point he, is, it, it is speed guys in front right. of power guys. And you got Laurie down there who runs pretty good. Not like this, but you know, had a good year last year and was probably hitting. Hopefully, hope to have him higher in the order than eight after after last year's season had a good year. Two and two to Bonifacio. He drives on the right. Reddick hustling back, still going back. He turns around and that one is gone. Like I said, a speed guy. <laughs> Bonifacio with his third home run of the year. It's three nothing Blue Jays. Well, he got around the bases quick. Well, just another real mistake here. Two two trying to come inside. You can see how this ball drifts right over the middle of the plate, and it's just a place, especially against a team that's so capable of hitting home runs. Not so much from Bonifacio, but the rest of this crew. They'll make you pay. So two more home runs tonight for the Blue Jays. They have five in the series. Four solo and a two run shot. Not happy. Well now three and zero to Reyes. Not close. A four pitch walk to Reyes. So that's the first walk. All right, check this out. Straley's fastball. Now about Through eight, the order this three, season, first time, nine, second time, third time. So you get the gist of what we're saying here. The velocity goes down a little bit, and the opponent's bat batting average goes up. So what do you take from that, Scott? Well, I think it's a lot of it is a guy that loves to pound the zone early. A lot of hitters usually go up their first time up, maybe take a few pitches. You're going to get in better counts. But until we saw Griffin cruise through the first three, struggles a little bit after that. It's a it's a point of once you start going through the lineup a couple times, every hitter's aware of how they were pitched that first time through. It's a time to mix sequences. And if you're going to keep throwing that fastball, eventually, and we're seeing that by those numbers, you're going to start jumping on. And as Turris takes the ball, not that you want to get away from it, but you just got to show that you're going to throw or capable of throwing something else just to get him off that pitch. One and zero to as Turris and. That one misses. 
So two and oh six straight balls thrown by Dan Straley. Good time for Kurt Young to see if he can settle down as youngster. Well, Kurt's just going to come out here and reset things. He's Straley's throwing strikes today. I mean that's 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 good. That's a good part of this. It's just two at times. He's worked ahead. And you can see these last two hitters his arm slots kind of drifted down a little bit maybe looking for a little more movement something to get the ball. Maybe not so straight maybe forcing the two seam action. And he's just got too low and they've they've sailed on him and he's. Ended up missing the strike zone. That one in for a strike. So as always, whatever Kurt Young said, it was the right thing. Kurt does such a nice job. He's such a calming presence. If you spoke to the guy, he's no matter how tense it is, he is just low pulse, no problem. Great for a young staff. Rosales, and he threw it away. So Reyes is going to end up at third, and he's being waved home. The throw to the plate, not in time, and it's four to nothing. So Rosales rushed it a little bit, and he threw it away. And Reyes came all the way around to score as Churras ends up at second base. Well, these are miscues that are tough. Rosales got him plenty of time. He ends up yanking it. Reyes runs real good. You can see how far Reddick has to come to get to the ball. Speedy Reyes is making it easy. Lowry on the move to the base, but that ball was yanked pretty good by Rosales. That's a play he makes nine out of ten times, if not more. So fielder's choice E6, no RBI. And now the big boys do come up. You got plenty of time. This looked like he ended up cutting the ball. Sometimes you grab the ball and you get a poor grip, and you can see Reyes never even slowed a bit. Goes into home standing up. One and one now to Jose Batista. Well, he's bummed, you know, he doesn't get in there a lot, and he's a great defensive shortstop. He gets in there. Nobody wants to win more than him, and he feels terrible. He wasn't help, able to help Straley right there. Would have been a big double play. Batista, home run and a ground out so far. And a pitch to hit, fouled at bat. Well, the Rangers tied it up in the bottom of the seventh, 7-7, seven, seven, and the Angels are trying to take the lead in the top of the eighth. So it's one of those, one of those nights in Arlington. You saw a few of those. Oh man! Call those last at bat game. Right? You yes. want to make sure you have yeah. the last. At Every inning seemed like it. <laughs> Big crooked number going up on that board. Breaking ball is inside. Well, you know it gets hot there, and the ball travels. The dirt is hard. Yep. A lot of ground balls are going through. It wears on you physically. Hands are sweaty. Pitchers are unable to throw good breaking stuff. Whew. Good recipe for a hitter. And a swing and a miss at a pitch that was well in the dirt. Throw to first, so Batista strikes out. So a big strikeout there. And now Encarnacion steps up. Breaking ball right here. Gets the big guy to chase. Right. Norris does a nice job of blocking it. Gloving it more than anything. Thought he got him on the tag, but umpire said no, had to finish the play first. So Encarnacion steps in with a ground out and a single. He singled and scored in the fourth inning. First pitch drops low. 
87 pitches for Straley with one out here in the fifth inning. Two runs are in. Good slider there, and then kind of seeing way out ahead. Good slider right here, like you said, Glenn. See that location? Starts out, looks like a strike, ends up bottoming out, out of the zone. These guys, these big home run guys, they're they're hungry, they're aggressive, they will chase. Fastball off the plate. Just don't hang it, right? Don't hang it. Angels grab the lead, 8-7. Still batting. Teeter totter. Yep. All right, let's make a bet. Will that be the final score? I say no. Mm. <laughs> you gotta go first. Yeah, that's true. Right? Donaldson ranges to his left. Throws fine and digs it out. So two outs. And his tour is still at second base, and here's Adam Lind. Good pitch again here from Straley. Gets Encarnacion to pull an outside pitch. Donaldson makes a bit of a short throw, a little bit of a sinker. Fryman says, no problem. Nice dig by the big guy. So Lind steps in. He's one for two. Which is outside. Another long inning for Dan Straley. Lynn taken and he takes a strike. Good change up there. He threw him a little harder as well. Good down action on it. See the bottom kind of fall out of this ball. See Lind out front. You see him out front like that. They think it's a fastball. That's good deception right there. Tried it again. This time Lind lays off. Slider in three and two. Long look in by Straley. Now he's ready. Takes a peek at his tourists. This is outside and it's the walk second walk in the inning. And Bob Melvin is coming out. Knocking on the door 100 pitches. Bob Melvin's not taking any chances. So Straley four and two thirds Otero coming in when it's time for change. Think speedy oil change and tune up your oil change tune up and small experts.
Hiaspo from the Angels for Grant Green. How about that? Out of the blue. I didn't see that one coming. I don't think any of us saw it coming. We just saw Kai Aspo playing third base for the Angels. He's been playing third base for them for two, three years now. Probably will not play third base here, though. Can play some second base. Hasn't done it in a couple of years. But Probably slides over there. So, how about that? Alberto Kai Aspo. He's a switch hitter. So we've Ace fans have seen a lot of him. Being with the Angels, and he is signed for next year. So the A's not only get him for the remainder of this year, but he's under contract for next year. So there you go, A's fans. Decent bat. Yeah, switch hitter. So all the trade rumors that are flying around, that one just announced. Two -oh pitch is ripped to right. That's a base hit. As Turris is being waved home, Reddick's throw to the plate is not quite in time. As Turris just got around the tag of Norris, and it's five to nothing. Terrific throw by Reddick. Two -oh pitch right here, right over the middle of the plate. Rasmus clobbers it. Reddick charges nicely, gets a good hop. And we know he's got a cannon. He puts up good throw on this. Norris kind of creeps up just a hair. Gets the ball. Nice slide. See if he can grab some jersey. Close. Just gets his hand in there, I think. Kind of sweeps back. Well, here's Aaron Sebia. Aaron CB has struck out and fouled out to right field. You can see how come Reddick's got so many assists. That was a great yep. throw. Swing and a miss, and it's 0 and 2. Stirrus breaking on contact. Rounds third nicely. Sees where Norris is. Slides his body out and uses his hand to come back and reach for the plate. Well done. Rosales charges. He's got it. And he throws in time. Side retired. Three runs for the Blue Jays. So we're headed to the bottom of the fifth. It's the Jays five and the A's nothing. Catch all the second half action in HD quality. Watch every out of market game live on more than 350 mobile and connected devices. Visit MLB.tv today. MLB.tv, baseball everywhere. 
Mark Burley back to work. He now has a 5 nothing lead. Norris, Reddick, and Rosales. Burley has allowed just two hits. Correction, he's allowed three hits. No walks, one strikeout. Really giving up light contact. I mean, Norris got a hit, kind of jammed. Donaldson kind of yanks a ball in the hole. Lowry has to hit a pitch low and away, flips it over to second. Really minimal damage so far as far as just barreling balls. The Angels have taken a 10 to 7 lead over the Rangers in the top of the eighth inning, and they're still batting. So I won the bet, Scott. You won. <laughs> Foul territory and into the seats. So Alberto Caspo is now in Oakland A. He just joined us. Yeah, he's going to have a day game tomorrow. Caspo and. His former team, the Angels, in Texas. That one's lined, and that's a base hit for Norris. He's two for two. So, if Kiaspo gets here by tomorrow, day game, we'll see. We'll see, right. Otherwise, he'll certainly be here for the weekend. Probably the best ball hit today by the A's. Big curveball from. Burley doesn't always throw it, but Norris sees it good, stays back, finds the barrel. But yeah, Kiaspo, that trade kind of odd because you don't see a lot of this time of year interdivision rivals nope. making deals. But it sounded like the last couple days the Angels. Let it be known that they're ready to deal. Struggling. Things aren't looking good. You lose two holes. Tough season all around. Reddick now behind in the count one and two. Tries the same pitch that Reddick swung and missed it. He misses outside to even the count. Bonifacio playing very shallow in left field and she's shallow and toward left center, and he was right there. So that's out number one. 17 consecutive scoreless innings for Mark Burley. His last start, he had a two hit shutout against the Houston Astros. So, he's a, a hot pitcher. He's on a hot streak. You know, he, he's got a four and a half ERA. So, I mean, he's, he's shown that he can miss over the plate, but you're just not seeing it here, and I'm guessing not seeing it over the last 17 innings. Because he's painted. One and one to Ben Rosales. Lined out to Brett Laurie, who made a nice play, diving to his left to pick up the second out in the third. More action for Laurie who throws to second and they'll get the out there. So fielder's choice for Rosales. Two outs and out of the top of the order in Coco Crisp. Kind of seemed like weird feet there from Laurie. I didn't know if uh, look for a second like he was just going to go straight to first. In the last minute he seemed to kind of realize oh I should go to second.
first pitch to Coco is a strike on the inside corner. A couple of fly balls to center field for Coco Chris. The outfield playing extremely shallow. Not as shallow as you'll see a center fielder play. Play for really any hit. Batista coming in. He's got it. Side retired. Lead off single by Norris. Nothing else for the ace. So Burley's tough so far. Sixth inning coming up. Xfinity Friday Family Pack presented by Xfinity and co-sponsored by the Contra Costa Times. Every Friday home game, you can get four plaza level tickets, four Coliseum hot dogs, four medium Pepsis, and four bags of peanuts for only 50 bucks. Tickets are limited, so act fast. For more information and tickets, go to OaklandAthletics.com slash Friday. Well, some work to do for the A's. They trail 5-0 top of the sixth inning. It'll be Lori, Bonifacio, and Reyes for the Blue Jays here in the sixth. Dan Otero on in relief. So Dan Straley not sharp tonight. Well, Dan threw a lot of strikes. He just made mistakes over the plate, gotten good counts, worked ahead. Just couldn't put guys away. Reddick comes in, little basket catch, no problem. Out number one. Well, as soon as the sun goes down and you quit worrying about that, you got one other thing to worry about, and that's these lights, those little liners. You can see right there, he lost it. Number one, Emilio. Hung on and caught it, like you said, basket style. First pitch to Bonifacio it is a strike. Bonifacio homered in the fifth, caught us by surprise. You can see him kind of pause with his feet, and basically what it does is it changes the trajectory of your vision to the ball, and you can kind of, by not staying on that path, you can actually let the ball come out of the lights, pick up vision again, and then make the grab. Nice adjustment by Reddick. So I guess it's different than the the sun because you don't know if the ball is going to come out of the sun. You yeah. know it's going to at some point pass past the lights, go past the lights. The sun can be tougher, especially usually it's high in the sky, and a lot of times it'll just stay in the sun and just doesn't come out. These here, and it's part of the home field advantage. Low liners 
at least for a brief period, are going to stay in that light, and it's tough. You just can't panic. Do what Josh did. Change your angle. And hope it comes out. Hope your reactions are good enough to catch it. One two pitch, a swing and a miss by Bonifacio. So Otero has his first strikeout. Good movement here from Otero. You know how far that two seamer went. Pretty flat. Covered a lot of ground going across the zone. Top of the order in Reyes. Reyes with a line out, a foul out, and then he walked and scored in the fifth. That one rolls foul, 0 and 2. Angels are leading the Rangers 11 to 7 in the bottom of the eighth inning. Oh, two pitch, swing and a miss. Otero with a very nice inning, three up, three down, with a couple of strikeouts. Bottom of the sixth coming up. It'll be Young, Lowry, and Cespedes, five nothing Toronto. Comcast Sportsnet California is brought to you by Cash Creek Casino Resort. Cash Creek's end the summers. Waves of cash every day. Visit CashCreek.com. Detail. Chilly night at the ballpark. A little bit too much Blue Jays right now. They lead 5 0, but still some time for the A's. They got four more at bats. Trailing 5 0. So Chris Young to lead it off. Burley has allowed four hits. Not much of anything else. No tricks with Burley. You know what you're going to get. He's been around for 13 years. I tell you, when you've seen a guy as much as Burley and you faced him repeatedly and you still can't get him out, that's tough. That's a guy that changes the sequence. The game changes every time you face him. They got weapons. And they got command. I can guarantee those two things. Popped up. Could be playable, and it will be for Encarnacion. He's got it. So, Scott, with a guy like Burley, he's been around forever. You've faced him many, many times. Do you still go to the video room and look at the guy? He's not uh, changing it. He's, he's doing the same thing he did 10 years if, ago. If, if you do, it's out of habit. I mean, that's the only thing. You're, you know what you're going to get. And, and guys like this that aren't overpowering, I mean, there's guys that you know it's going to be the same thing all the time. Here comes 100, I got a killer slider, whatever it is. This guy's just got four different things, and he is just going to put them in tough areas to hit. So, really, you kind of got to commit to a plan, commit to a location, and really, you just got to stay within that plan no matter 
if it doesn't work that at bat or the next at bat, you got to commit to something. If you decided to just start chasing, Forget it's it. like chasing yeah. your tail and you're going to be over. And it's he's this is those are the type of hitters that he just feasts on. He'll get you. He'll see what you're doing. If you're chasing, if you're willing to chase, he's going to just pull the string on you, keep you out front, and he'll miss barrels all day. Inside corner, and the count is even at two and two to Lowry, who has lined out and singled. Reach for that one. So you could just see by the swing of Lowry how once you get out on that front foot, there's not much you can do. And you wonder why the outfield plays so shallow. He just gets a lot of guys out front. Not a lot of guys kind of on that back leg really drive the ball. There's a lot of reach, a lot of out front, a lot of balls hit off towards the end of the bat, which just don't carry. Yeah, that's nine fly balls and when I say fly balls I mean to the outfield right. doesn't include some a couple line drive outs on the infield and a couple of foul outs on the infield so he is a fly ball guy Cespedes is fly ball to left and a fly ball to center tonight and he's behind in the count on two Barely throws a couple cutters in there to start get bat. Right on the corner. Get him 0-2. Tries it again up the ladder a little bit. So if he goes up the ladder one time, it's probably just for show. You gotta believe he's gonna go to the bottom of the strike zone. Just doesn't double up very often. I mean, look at that thing's located. Back door, little cutter, little slider, whatever it is. I think this guy just manipulates however he feels is needed in the situation. He might add a little, subtract a little bit, depending on what he thinks the hitter's geared for. Crafty, you know. Chespinus goes down to get that one and lines it into the seats. I know he hasn't got a hit. We've been talking about him coming out of this, but I'm telling you, I'm really liking the swings. I'm liking the approach. I'm liking his takes. This guy's knocking on the door coming out of him. A slump that he's been in for quite a while. That one hit hard again, foul. Eighty pitches for Burley. Reached for it. Harry has it. Side retired. Three up, three down inning for Burley, and we're headed to the seventh. Five nothing Blue Jays.
California is brought to you by Xfinity, home of the most live sports, and by Toyota. Do the math and save at your local Toyota dealer. Five nothing, the Blue Jays leading, and it is the seventh inning. Is Torres Batista Encarnacion against Dan Otero. So the story tonight a couple of home runs again for the Blue Jays. They've hit five in the series, and Mark Burley's been very good. Donaldson, he's picked at third. He was playing in as Torres is retired. Here's our Ford Wright choice. There he is again. We got to see this guy all the time. I see him all the time now. June 18th. Look at that drive. Two out, walk off single against a Rangers pitcher by the name of R.A. Dickey. Mark Ellis scored. That was in the 11th inning. Rangers won the game, or the A's beat the Rangers 4 to 3. That was your second career walk off. Your home run. I think I like first. my other one better. Yeah, that's true. It's kind of a. Well, so he hit it off Ari Dickey, who I, I don't think he was a knuckleballer back then. No. He was like a, first round draft pick. Oh no, yeah. He had all sorts of stuff. So, Ari Dickey's going to pitch tomorrow. So that was June 18th of 2003. Wow. Way back. One and one to Bautista. Could not pull the trigger, and it's one and two. Home run, ground out, strikeout for Jose Bautista. Bautista, an all star again this year. He's been an all star four times now. In fact, each of the last four years, Carnacion was an all star this year. 11 10, Giovanni Soto with a three run homer in the bottom of the eighth, still batting. That one's ripped, and it's going to one hop the wall so fast that Batista is going to. Round and stay at first. It smashed off the wall, came right back to Cespedes, who fired it back in. That, that, that's a line drive. This is a laser beam. Wow, listen to it. Look at this thing. One skip straight off the wall. Cespedes has got the ball probably before Batista even gets to first. That was a great there, throw. Looks up, Cespedes has got the ball. Air breaks. That was a great throw. Carnacion takes inside. One for three for Encarnacion. He singled and scored in the fourth inning. Thing the Blue Jays do have to look forward to, even though it's been a very disappointing year. They have Batista and Carnacion on long term contracts. They both signed through 2015, so that's nice. Reddick slides, collision, and this is not good. The ball lands fair, everybody's safe, and Reddick is down. Well, he had a long way to go, and Lowry and Reddick kind of got there at the same time, and it looks like he got a, a knee to the head, possibly the back of the head. At least he's conscious. That's a good thing. But definitely in pain. So watch Lowry and Reddick. See if we can get a better look at what happened. Well, that might have been to the side right there. Kind of above the ear. Right side. Like maybe a knee to the side of the head. Yeah. 
God, these are tough. They're so far for you to run and. Yeah, right there, kind of right below the ear, neck almost, huh? When you got to go that far, it's hard to peek down to see who else is coming. Yeah. You can see Lowry's knee kind of give way a little bit, so he he caught Reddick clean. See him moving his jaw, kind of looks like part head, part jaw. Walt Horn's probably going through concussion type of questions. You can see Josh shaking his head, but that didn't look good, but that could have been a lot worse. You see it. It's the right knee of Lowry. Looks like he's going to hang in there. He is. So that is great to see. Reddick seems to be okay, and he's going to. Jock back to his position. So a scary moment here at the Coliseum, but it looks like it turns out okay. So it goes as a hit for Encarnacion. So two on and one out. Adam Lind will be the hitter. Let Otero throw a couple warm up pitches, and now Lind will head to the plate. Number 26, Adam Lind. Lind has been on base a couple of times with a single and a walk. Had a home run last night. First pitch in for a strike. Otero came in with two outs in the fifth inning. Gave up a hit to Raspis and then got Aaron Seabe for the final out. A three up, three on six. Now trying to work his way out of a jam here in the seventh. Just missed, and it's two and one. So that game in Arlington, it's now the Angels 11, the Rangers 10, and they're just starting the top of the ninth inning. Again, it was Giovanni Soto with a three run homer to close the gap to 11 10. Should reach the seats, and it will. A whole lot of runs. 21 runs. 21 runs. 31 hits in that game, and it's not over yet. So that game and this game, the only two American League games still going on. Yeah, I remember series over there. They could be exhausting. A lot of runs, the heat. Otero throws the second for one on the first double play. 163 side retired seventh inning stretch from the Coliseum. 5 0 Blue Jays.
the trade. And our own Kate Longworth just moments ago spoke with A's general manager Billy Bean about the trade. Here it is. Well, what do you see in Kaiaspo and how do you see him fitting in here with the green and gold? Well, he's a, he's a good offensive player. I mean, he uh, from both sides of the plate, and he's pretty versatile. We were, we were pretty thin in the infield position, and we're it's a bit of a hedge with Josh. He's been playing every day, Donaldson over to third. And, uh, you know, we need a right-handed bat to complement Sogi, and uh, there's days that Alberta can go to second base, so he can go to short, give Jed a day off. So uh, we were sort of a little bit with disaster if something happened on the left side of the infield and so we desperately needed to pick up another infielder and, and Alberto is a uh, once again versatile guy can play multiple positions all right good stuff we appreciate Kate Longworth hustling down there well done Kate speaking with the general manager so Alberto Cayasco that's what we can expect from him and some good points made by Billy Josh Donaldson has played just about well, just about every inning yeah, you and know, I think maybe times where you'd like to give him a break. Frees up Bob Melvin a little bit. Gives him some options. Coming down the stretch, like you said, some of these guys, they need some rest. Yep. But it is a bit of a hedge because, yeah, something goes wrong. Big trouble. Fryman has a one-out single. So if you're just joining us, the A's have acquired Alberto Cayaspo from the Angels. There's his numbers this year. Kiaspo is 30 years old. He's from Venezuela. He's a switch hitter. He's played just third base the last couple of years, but he can't play some second base. And he is signed through next year. So the A's will have him this year and next year. Got a big guy, 5'9". Decent player all around. He's got some off offensive upside. And he's it's a good addition. He's always been better against left-handed pitching. So better as a right-handed hitter than he is as a left-handed hitter. That is that's what the A's are looking for. Absolutely. Sogard's done a nice job. So to play Sogard against right-handers, maybe Kiasko against left-handers. A lot of different things. And I think you know Billy said it best. It gives it gives Bob Elvin here. Here's some a little extra pieces to work with. And you don't have to hold your breath as far as you see a collision out there and you lose one of your guys, it can happen that fast. And that changes everything. So we're excited about the deal and we wish Grant Green good luck. He's really going home. He grew up in Southern California in that area down by Anaheim. You're going to see Grant Green back in the big leagues. Bit of a question where he's going to end up defensively, but the guy can hit in the big leagues. We'll see him up there one day. So do you think Scott that that was maybe the biggest concern for the A's with Grant Green where where are we going to play this guy. I think so you know and I think that uh, you got to have a little patience with the guy. I mean he's learning a new position and I think this team is not in the position that they were ready to be patient. With. Not when you're have the best record in the American League. Exactly. Coming back is Aaron Seabia, but it'll be into the seats. So three and two now to Norris, who's had a couple of base hits. So Norris two for two. Fryman with the one out single. And that one's lying down the left field line, but Norris hooked it foul. Hayes have had one base runner get to second base. That was Lowry in the fourth inning. He got there after he singled, and then Donaldson singled. That's the only runner they've had in scoring position. Wow. That's the 90th pitch there for Burley. Got a little accident in the Jays' pen. He seems pretty solid still out there.
Shallow right down the line, and it's going to drop, and it is just foul. And I mean just foul. <laughs> Long run for Batista. He wasn't going to get there. That's a no man's land play. Unlucky for the A's. So a quick meeting between Aaron Seabee and Burley comes to an end. Baseball loose down the right field lines picked up by the bullpen catcher for the Blue Jays. Short lead for Fryman, and here's the payoff pitch to Norris. And he swings and misses. Boy, 75 miles an hour on that pitch. You just can't expect it 3 2, can you? Well, full count. You know, we talk about this. Just this guy does not give in. There you go. Full count. Number 16. Throws one that bounces just behind home plate. He refuses to give you a pitch to hit. So here's Reddick, who's 0 for 2. He's hit a couple of fly balls, and that one's ripped toward right field. Batista's back. Step from the warning track. He's got it. Side retired, so a hit and a runner left onto the eighth inning. Five nothing, Blue Jays. Well, they know where to find the best deal in Barry Baseball Comcast Sportsnet, California's authentic Fan Fridays at the Coliseum. This Friday, get a ticket in our value deck behind home plate. You're going to get a pair of authentic A sunglasses, a cheer card, and a $6 food and drink voucher, all for one great price. The best deal in Bay Area baseball is Comcast Sportsnet's authentic Fan Friday. Log on to CSNCalifornia.com for details. And that's a big series, A's Rangers. So 93 pitches, five or seven shutout innings on five hits. Gosh, 93 pitches. I don't even know if he broke a sweat. He was cruising, wasn't he? Why would you take him out? Not 100%. When it's time for change, think speedy oil change and tune-up. Your oil change, tune-up, and smog expert. Blevins comes in. Facing Colby Rasmus, top of the eighth. 
Good sign seeing Jerry come in. Yesterday have a clean inning. See him get back on track. Yep. A couple of hits tonight for Rasmus, including an RBI single. So Dan Otero goes two and a third innings of shutout baseball. So a nice job by the he's right hander Otero. Close pitch with a fastball. Must have missed inside. They're going to the bottom of the ninth inning in Arlington. Still 11 10 Angels. So we'll let you know what happens in that one when it goes final. This one's popped up just short of us. Yeah, I made a grab. Yeah, out of the cast. We no got a problem. broken wing. No problem. <laughs> Rasmus waited on that breaking ball and then rolled it foul. Looking at that AL East, the Rays won tonight, five to two over the Arizona Diamondbacks. An interleague game there. Rays have won 23 out of their last 27. What can you say about <laughs> what's going on with the Rays? They've just been playing terrific baseball. Red Sox beat the Mariners eight to two. So both the Rays and the Red Sox win. So the Rays hold on to their half game lead over Boston in the East. Don't forget about the Orioles. They beat Houston four to three Chen over Harrell. And Chris Davis hit his 38th home run. He now has 38 homers and 99 RBIs. So Baltimore remains five games back. Davis is in a bit of a home run funk. Breaking out. Left center shallow. And Suspidus gets there to make the catch. So one out here in the top of the eighth inning in the central. Detroit beat Washington five to one. So an interleague game there. So the Tigers win their fourth in a row. Alex Avila with the grand slam. Sanchez over Strasburg in that one. Tigers have won eight out of nine. They can't shake the Cleveland Indians though. Indians won seven to four over the White Sox. So the Indians have won six in a row and they remain two and a half back. And then you start thinking about the wild card. Two wild cards get in. Well now you got Boston and Baltimore and Cleveland. All with very similar records that are not first place teams. Texas Rangers, not a first place team. Throw them in that wild card right. mix. Got a lot of math going on. Yeah. One and one the count to Aaron Sebia. CB is 0 for 3 tonight. And he swings and misses behind in the count now 1 and 2. The Royals beat the Twins 7 to 2. And the Royals are trying to make themselves a factor. They have won 7 in a row. They're not a game. They're now a game over 500. Never too late no. to make a run. The Yankees 
are playing the Dodgers in Los Angeles. That's a 2 2 game in the seventh inning. Two and two to Aaron Sebia. Towards Cespedes, who goes back a couple steps. He's got it, and that's out number two. Yeah, but that's a packed house. New York and yeah. LA. Oh, yeah. Great series. The way the Dodgers are playing. How about it? You know, the way they're playing, it, it would surprise me if they Glory. win the National League West by seven, eight, nine games. Oh, man. I mean, they just. Yeah, I know. Steamrolling. Yep. That's nothing against the other teams, but boy, you start rolling and. They got a club. Everybody's looking up yeah. at you. First pitch strike to Brett Lorry. Rajay Davis starting to get ready. Slider on the outside corner, 0 and 2. Side corner with a fastball, so Blevins has a three up, three down inning, and we're headed to the bottom of the eighth. He's still trailing five nothing. Here's our game summary brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Mark Burley, the story tonight. Seven shutout innings for Burley. Gives up just five hits, doesn't walk anybody. And the A's just never got anything going. And more home runs for these Blue Jays. Batista in the first, his 25th of the year. And then the ninth place hitter, Emilio Bonifacio, hit his third home run of the year in the fifth inning. It was a three run fifth inning for the Blue Jays, so they lead five to nothing going to the bottom of the eighth inning. Mark Burley cruising along, seven innings, 93 pitches, so he's in complete control of this game. El Bencho. And he's done. <laughs> Time to go to the bullpen, and it's Steve Delabar. Big, tall right hander, and he's good. He was an all star this year. So when it's time for change, think speedy oil change and tune-up. Your oil change tune-up and smog experts. Here's Delabar, 5-1, 2.49. Look at the strikeouts and look at the innings pitched. This guy's got a live arm. See that opponent batting average is down. Right in the low 200s. This guy throws 97 miles an hour. He's got a filthy slider and split. 6'4", 235 pounder. And 
Rosales swings and misses, and that is out number one. The slider right there from Delamar. Pretty flat breaker, but 84 miles an hour after 95. Tough adjustment. Well, last year, Delabar with the Seattle Mariners, that's who got to the big leagues with. And he was pitching fairly well, and then he was traded around midseason to the Blue Jays. In fact, he was traded at the deadline. He didn't think much of it. It was Delabar going from Seattle to Toronto for Eric Thames, a left hand hitting outfielder. Yep. And I think they remember the trade, but it just was not one you really thought too much about. And it's probably a trade that Seattle Mariners wish they could have a do-over on because now Delabar is an all-star. Seattle's got a few of those. Yeah. 0-2 pitch, 95 up around the letters, and that's back-to-back -back strikeouts for Steve Delabar. Delabar's not monkeying around. He's coming with some cheese right here. Kind of a short arm. You can. I mean, it's 95, but it seems to be coming out of there a little even hotter than that. Crisp late, can't catch up. One to Chris Young, who has fouled out twice to first and hit a fly ball to center field. There you go, folks. Oh, my. The Rangers had two outs and nobody on base in the bottom of the ninth inning. Kinsler got on, stole second, and Beltre just singled him in, and it's tied at 11. Angels were one out away from a wild win, and Freire could not close it. So. Sign of trouble. So Kinzer with a big stolen base, Beltre with the hit. And Rangers are still batting, and Young goes around, says Ted Barrett. So Delabar strikes out the side in the bottom of the eighth, and that was pretty impressive. We're headed to the ninth. Number one, Emilio. So it's time for James Think Speedy Oil Change in Tune-Up. It's your oil change tune-up and smog expert. So Pat Neshek, the fourth pitcher of the night for the Athletics. It's been Straley, Otero, Blevins, and now Neshek. Bonifacio to lead it off. He's got the home run, one for three. Grounded out and struck out as well.
Kat Nishak into the game. Last time Nishak pitched was last Thursday. So he's been a little bit of a little bit of a break. Shelved. Back at. And good. Change of 69 miles an hour. It just kind of floated up there and probably looked like it was never going to get there to Bonifacio. Known a couple to Bonifacio. That is just like puts on a parachute, doesn't it? Almost underwater nope. type pitch. So that game now going extra innings in Arlington tied at 11. Reyes to follow and then his tourists here in the top of the ninth inning. Swing and a miss. Stayed right with that off speed. 67 miles an hour that time. The A's endless winter themed fireworks show presented by Burton Snowboards is set for Friday, August 2nd after the A's play the Rangers at O.Co Coliseum. Bring the family and enjoy the show from the outfield grass. On field capacity is limited. Sierra Tahoe and Burton Snowboards will be on site helping kids learn how to snowboard in their riglet area by section 235. For more information and tickets, go to OaklandAthletics.com slash winner. Reyes on the ground. And it's scooped up by Fryman, and that's out number two. I like that. Number three. My sir. Is Remember him three. using it as much. He broke it out now. Seems to be making a point of it. 69 miles an hour, huh? Bat boy forgot the bat. So home plate umpire Alfonso Marquez helps out the situation. His job is to keep the game moving. Doing a nice job. Yeah. Scott, how about the National League Central? You played in it for a while. Mm -hmm. The Cardinals and the Pirates are playing a five-game series. I can't remember the last time I played five games. Series. Last night, doubleheader tonight. Game tomorrow, game Thursday. Of course, one is a makeup game from an earlier arena. Pirates won last night. Pirates swept the doubleheader from the Cardinals today. It's making a move. At home. That is making a move. And the Pirates now are in first place. They have a game and a half lead, so they have picked up three games in the standings in hours. <laughs> within, a, yeah, yeah, about 24 hours. So things are happening in Pittsburgh. So they now have a game and a half lead over the St. Louis Cardinals. Interesting. That division's up in the air. Yeah, three good teams. Yeah. Your old team, the Reds, are in San Diego. They're tied 2 2 in the seventh. And the A's will see the Reds in Cincinnati Tuesday and Wednesday. A week from tonight. See a great American ballpark. Good ballpark to hit it. Donaldson and he cannot quite get there. Bounces up into the seats. Well, he's been tested as far as range today. Into the foul ground. Made a nice play in the first inning. Banged his knee pretty hard against the tarp, but he seems to be okay. Moving at a pretty good clip, and I'm going to tell you guys that is not a soft tarp. It might look all cozy and nice, but that thing is hard. Rosales backhands, straightens up, throws just in time to get his tourist side retired. So Nishak, three up, three down, and we're headed to the ninth. Lots of work to do for the A's. They trail five now.
for the AT&T U-verse Reverse Rewind. Well, today was all about this guy, Mark Burley. Last outing, nine innings, shutout. And he left off doing the same thing here with the A's. Ground balls, crafty, he missed barrels, got chases. This is why this guy's been so good for so long. Seven innings, five hits, no runs. Two strikeouts, no walks. This guy hit every single corner with every different type of pitch. A's were baffled today. So 5 nothing indeed, bottom of the ninth inning. And we've got a new pitcher for Toronto. When it's time for change, think speedy oil change in tune-up, your oil change tune-up, and smog experts. It is Darren Oliver. He'll face Lowry, Suspidus, and Donaldson. So when I say veteran, <laughs> the spring chicken. I mean veteran. Darren Oliver. And he still get people out. And that one's launched toward left center field. And it is off the wall. So Lowry does not wait around and he gets a booming double. First extra base hit for the A's tonight. Oliver trying to come inside on Lowry. Doesn't throw near as hard as Delabar. Pitch he can handle. He drives this into the night. Hit the top of the left center field wall. He's got a guy in scoring position. Hasn't hap happened much this. <laughs> hasn't happened much tonight getting to second base. So here's Cespedes. First pitch is low. So Darren Oliver is 42 years old. This is his 19th year in the big leagues. Wow. He'll be 43 on the 6th of October. I guess he's got no hobbies. <laughs> he got to the big leagues for the first time in 1993. Spent a long time with Rangers. He's had three different stints with the Texas Rangers. His second year with the Blue Jays. Breaking ball and the count is one and two. Interesting note on Oliver Scott. The last five years, he's had an ERA under three every year. And this is a guy who, so now you're talking about late 30s, early 40s, and pitching a lot of games. 60 appearances, 65 appearances. That's unbelievable. That is. Just to stay healthy and maintain yeah, stuff. True. I mean, that's, I'll tell you, throwing a baseball is not natural. Do it this long, that's something. That's the Blue Jays' closer, Casey Jansen, just in case the A's make their move here. 2 2 pitch to Cespedes in the dirt, and now it's 3 and 2. Donaldson in the on deck circle. After Donaldson, it's Fryman. Bounce toward the shortstop, Reyes. He flips it across, and they call him safe. Cespedes digging it down the line, and he beat it. I don't know. This is a close one. Cespedes hits it. Runs hard. But because he kind of chopped it, Reyes was unable to charge it, had to stay back and get that hop. And Cespedes, for a big guy, runs really well. Puts his head down, runs through the base.
Very close. Man, we might have snuck one. I snuck one by there. So Lowry stayed at second. So first and second, nobody out for Donaldson. Hibernation's over. <laughs> well, one now to Donaldson, who is one for three, a ground out, a single, and a fly ball to center field for Donaldson. One thing about the A's, it's never really over. Nope. Grounded to third. And out at second, and that's a double play. So five, four, three, two outs, and Lowry now at third. So Donaldson one for four. Now Maddie, first baseman. And here's Fryman. Seven, Nate Fryman. Fryman is one for three. And a fastball just a bit inside. So a day game tomorrow, and it's radio only. First pitch scheduled for 12.35. So we'll listen to the game on 95.7, the game. Cologne and Dickey is your pitching matchup. The A's will have an off day on Thursday, and then the big series, the Rangers will be in town Friday night. 705. Our coverage here in Comcast Sportsnet California starts at 630 with A's pregame live. So join us on Friday. Coliseum should be bouncing a little bit with the Rangers in town. Big crowds are expected. One and two to Fryman. And here's the pitch. It's going to be Malone and Agondo on Friday, Parker Garza on Saturday, Griffin Holland on Sunday. So there's your pitching matchups for the weekend series against the second place Texas Rangers. Bounce toward Reyes who charges, throws on the run, and that's going to do it. So. Behind Mark Burley and a couple of relievers, the Blue Jays shut out the A's tonight, five to nothing, in Game Two of the series. So rubber game this series tomorrow afternoon here at the Coliseum. So Burley gets his seventh win. He's seven and seven. Straley takes the loss. He is six and five. So final score again: the Toronto Blue Jays five and the Oakland A's nothing. You've been watching A's baseball at Comcast Sports in California. Do not go away. Ace Post Game Live with Scott Reese and Shooty Babbitt starts right now.